Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. If this is the first time joining us, uh, this is a, this was formerly a podcast about, uh, you know, just an internal monologue uh, <laughs> externally, where I would go through just everything that came to my mind. But now, it's uh, still going to be that, but it's going to be a little more structured, a lot less rambly, I believe. Uh, it's still gonna happen. I mean, you can't get that, you can't get rid of that. Most of the time, it's a one-man podcast, you know? It's just gonna be me rambling as I go through the topics. But, uh, I've got a little bit of stuff, a little bit of stuff prepared, just broad strokes. Got about 13 points, I think. And, uh, it'll be a lot smoother. It'll, uh, it'll roll. That being said, today's drink of choice is... Water. Just some nice, plain old tap water. Because I'm currently recording this just after I woke up. It is 11.21 a.m. on a Sunday. So I will not be not be drinking that early on a Sunday. But um, I have had some new uh, beers and liquors and the sort. That being a pack of Beer Hug IPA that I'm working my way through. I've had two of the four different types of beer in this pack. Um, I've had Secret Beer Hug and Hazy Beer Hug. Secret Beer Hug, I will say, um, the first sip was like a five. Five out of ten. Uh, I'm a big fan of PBR. PBR is like my ten beer. Um, a one would be the the Southern Comfort Pickle Tea that you all haven't seen because John lost his audio. Uh, I'm working on having somebody, you know, do something a little special with it. Uh, but that'll take a bit. So, the secret beer hug, in between those two, a solid five on the first drink. But as I drank more of it, it rapidly fell. It had this weird taste to it. Where it felt like, it made me feel like a cow. Like I was, it felt like I was chewing on grass. And it was unpleasant, and I hated everything about it. But, it wasn't horrible. So it can't go lower than a three. It It is drinkable. The Southern Comfort pickle tea, never again. Literally never again. Um, The Hazy Beer Hug? It had slightly more alcohol content. The one prior to it was around the upper 5, lower 6. Whereas this one was towards a 7. It was 6.9, I believe. And it was, uh, it rated a little higher. It, its first drink uh, was like a 6. And it turned out to be, overall, about a, uh, uh, I'll give it like a 4.5 to a 5. Not that bad. Not bad. But I've also recently had Butter Shots, the um, flavored schnapps that is 15% as much beer or as much alcohol content as approximately a wine. Well, you know, wines vary, but you get what I'm saying. It's in that ballpark. And it provided an almost identical butterscotch taste, and I'm a huge fan of butterscotch, so it's going to rate higher. Purely because of my preference there. I'm not I'm not rating these objectively. I am rating these subjectively to my taste, alright? They are Butter Shots was like eh, on the on a one to ten, ten being PBR, one being Southern Comfort Pickle Tea. But it's at like a six or a seven, man. It was pretty decent. Uh but that being said, John's audio, gone. He didn't save it. He told me he did. He showed me. He did not show me the audio being saved. He showed me hitting, or he showed me him hitting the save button, but never hitting the second confirmation button, which means that uh, it's gone. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I literally can't do anything about that one. That one's not on me. Blame John. But in the meantime, since it's been so long since I've last recorded, and since I've um. Last posted an episode. I've been extremely busy. I've been working on some Photoshop stuff. 
I've got some stuff in mind. I'm going to fix some stuff up, maybe change up the banner a little bit, add a little more to the thumbnails, because this is, this is an evolving podcast. You have to, you gotta, you know, this is my first delving, mostly, into entertainment in most sorts. Like, I, I do stream, but that's a different environment, because it's more of just, you give the title, and you make the banner, and stuff like that. There's not a thumbnail every time. It's just, the banner... The social links in the description, like, not the description, but in the thing below the stream. And that's it. That's just you on stream. That's it. Can't do anything about it. But with, uh, you know, YouTube content creation, there is more of a diverse, I wouldn't say diverse, I would say more like fluctuating changes throughout the content as you create it. So I'm working on getting that down, getting that written, essentially. And uh, it's going uh, not well. (laughs) I'm uh, kind of struggling, but it will turn out better than it is. So uh, these things take time. Now, in the meantime, I've been playing some Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, the new game that dropped on March the 24th, I believe, for PC players. Um, it's enjoyable. Better than Borderlands 3, if you're a fan of the franchise. Better than that. Uh, worse than... Nah, I wouldn't say worse than 2. You can't really compare them. They don't really feel the same at all. Uh, it's better than 3. The gameplay is about the same. But the anointments are much more balanced. The... Game feels a little empty to me, because there's not much you can farm, whereas in 3 you could farm, like, 50 different things per area. You could do a ton of different quests on the side and stuff like that, but all the weapons feel mostly the same to me uh, in Wonderlands. Like, in 3 you would find a legendary weapon and it would be like, oh, this feels completely different. Yeah, but uh, here it's just, they all kind of feel the same and they all feel like they do the same damage so it's a bit weird uh story's fun i'm really enjoying will arnett i'm really enjoying um the voice actor of bojack horseman uh being the big bad evil guy don't remember his um the actor's name at the moment but that's him um not will arnett i meant uh andy samberg come out or no, wait, Will Arnett's... Who the fuck is Will Arnett? Oh, okay, whatever. Um, uh, Andy Samberg is the voice actor of one of the companions and a few of the other random people throughout the game, so that's fun. Uh, I don't remember her name right now. But there's a voice actress in it that is also fairly well-liked playing the your robot companion that you meet at the introduction. So, and then of course, Tiny Tina's there. So it's enjoyable story so far. In the last, uh, since I've recorded, so I don't remember the exact time, but it's like a month and a half, I think. I've watched, uh, I've watched a few shows. I've watched a couple movies. I watched, uh, Nobody featuring Bob Odenkirk. That movie, pretty enjoyable. I, I like, uh, I, uh, that movie's like a six or a seven. Upper, uh, if it's a 6 at all, it's like a 6.8 or something. It's really enjoyable. Um, I don't hand out scores around 7 and 10 easily. Like, uh, I would say, like, the Dark Knight movie. That's like a a 6. The one featuring, um, I don't, I don't, I don't remember who else is even in it. I just remember that it didn't feel amazing. But it's, uh... Like, that movie is very well-liked. That's like a six, man. I don't know. Most movies get a higher rating just because of who's in it, and they're not getting it here. Even if it's an iconic movie, that doesn't make the movie good. I'll stand by that. Like, um... I also watched Better Call Saul. Well, I'm re-watching Better Call Saul at the moment. Uh, very good show. Really love it. Uh, another Bob Odenkirk. (laughs) 
I, I just enjoy Bob. Bob Odenkirk's a lot of fun. Great actor. Better Call Saul sitting at like a 7.7, I think. I think a 7.7 is pretty fair for Better Call Saul. Um, rewatching Gotham, the TV show, an adaptation of the Batman series. Yeah, no, this show's not good. It's not good, but uh, I'm still watching it. I I mean, like, I, it's just got some real problems. Some of the portrayals of some of the characters are really cool. Like, I actually really like the Penguin in it. I really, really like the Riddler. Um, everybody else is kind of trash. Harvey Bullock's fun. That's it. I don't know. There's not much to say about that show, man. Um, Game Over Man with the cast of The Workaholics. Had never seen it before. Uh, it's it's a movie. It's a movie. Four point seven, I think. There's not much good to say about it. There's some funny moments, but it's a comedy. If you don't hit a couple, then you're gonna just fail hard. Uh, uh, pretty soon though, I do intend to watch a few a few movies like The Other Guys with um, Will Ferrell. Uh, Beer Fest, because that one's a classic. I am I remember watching it when I was much younger, and I'm going to give it a little, a little rewatch, see if I enjoy it as much. And uh, Death at a Funeral, because I just think it might be a fun movie to watch. And uh, it's also got some actors in it that I really enjoy, like Peter Dinklage. Huge Peter Dinklage fan. I, um... I intend to really give that movie a shot. Because, like, I mean, Peter Dinklage, he's in... What? He's in Game of Thrones. He was the voice actor for the, um... The Ghost from Destiny 1 until they ended up changing the voice actor back to... Nolan North. In, um... One of the DLCs, and then they had to go back and revoice everything. But Peter Dinklage... Is the one that everyone thinks of when they think, like, the We've Awoken the Hive voice line from the, um, first mission on the moon in Destiny 1. Uh, yes, yeah, that's Dinklage. Until, um, until they ended up making more, and they were like, oh, we gotta rehire him to voice all this new stuff. That's a lot of money. So they went with the good old, good old Nolan North, who also does the voice of 343 Guilty Spark, I'm pretty sure. Uh, from the Halo franchise. I think he does almost all the monitors. And um, he also voices... Who else does he voice? Is it Nolan North? Is he Cade? He might be Cade. Let me check real quick. I mean, I got time, right? Why not? It's a podcast. It's a, it's a recording. Nolan North. Nolan North is... Nathan Drake. That makes sense to me. He's also Superboy and Superman from the Young Justice series. Uh, he's the voice, voice of Ghost from Destiny 2, of course. Um, who, wait. Uh, where is it? I could have sworn he was... He's, uh, he's a big voice actor. If you don't know Nolan North, then I'm a little surprised. He's... Very, very well known. But yeah. Nolan North, a lot of fun. Nolan North is a guy. He was in... What show was it? Was it... Oh, God. It was... What? Oh, it was, um... Fuck me. It was one of those shows that it was insanely popular. I'm not quite sure why. Haven't seen it. But, um, I mean, I'm scrolling. I'll just yeah, keep going until I find it. But there's a scene in which he does a little Destiny reference. Where he's like, oh, what was it? It was something like, oh, oh, you were talking about the moon? The moon? The one with the, it was like, oh, the dark secrets or whatever. 
which is a line that he also said in Destiny. It was uh, pretty cool. It was fun. Uh, a big fan of that. That was cool. I do not see it for the life of me. I'm looking. I don't know what it is. He is like the main character in it, though. And I just straight up don't see it anywhere. He's also Rick Toffin from the Zombies uh, maps for Call of Duty. So that's another name you might recognize. Uh, incredibly enjoyable, it is. The, um... I mean, his work. I've never really been too into zombies. The, um... The game mode. I mean, I could I could roll with it every now and then. Like the Black Ops Cold War. I'm probably going to go back and play through that a lot more. Because I just really enjoyed the Black Ops Cold War zombies. Even if the storyline wasn't as good, I don't think. The... The, um... Like, game systems they implemented were pretty cool. The way they did camos for weapons in that one, with the guns. I got the guns diamond, or the, well, the shotguns diamond in, um, zombies in, like, a month. Which is not incredibly fast, some people did it in, like, days, but for me, that's insane. I've never gotten anything diamond. It was just fun to do. Strongly recommend, uh, Black Ops Cold War Zombies, especially the first map. <laughs> That one was a lot of fun. The second one was, um, there. I never played the third. I had already uninstalled it at that point. Uh, I would say Black Ops Cold War game could have been way better. It suffered. It really, really suffered from some, uh, some problems. They tried to make it too COD-like when generally the games do better when they are less like COD. Like, Modern Warfare was way slower. Well, Modern Warfare 2019 was way slower and felt a lot more fun to play early on. Um, up until the point they were like, okay, people are wanting shipment back. Which, I, I mean, like, I'm down for bringing it back, but making it a permanent game mode separates the player base because there's these, this half of fans who only enjoy, like, old COD gameplay and the other half of people who enjoy just more of, like, a... A relaxed, tactical game. But, uh, COD can only be so tactical, so I'm not gonna call it tactical. It was more of a slower-paced Call of Duty. And that was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And then they fucked it up. And then in Cold War, they were like, okay, people liked the big map, so we're gonna make every map big. And that went very poorly. The game was like, okay. The newest COD? Haven't played it. Oh, no, I played the beta for Cold War, actually. I think Cold War is the newest. Um, that game is there. I don't, like, there's nothing to say about it, really. It just feels old. I don't mean old in a good way. I mean, like, underdeveloped. Everything feels the same. Like, uh, one assault rifle feels almost identical to another to me, and it's really weird. At least in Modern Warfare, there were the, um... The, oh, what were they called? The weapon mods, was it? No, that's a Destiny thing. The, whatever the, like, snake shot for the revolver was, and akimbo for the Desert Eagle, and 300 Blackout for the, uh, I don't remember what gun it was. But there was stuff like that, you know? And, like, Dragon's Breath rounds for the shotguns. Those made the game feel different, even if some of the guns felt the same. Like, the M4 and the um, the other fully auto that wasn't the AK. I don't remember what it is. I cannot remember it for the life of me. They felt very, very similar to me. And it was kind of a bummer. Until you unlocked some of the attachments and suddenly the game felt entirely new. That was very well done. But... At the end of the day, it's a COD game. You can only get so picky. Like it, it's a, it's a COD game, man. You can you cannot expect that much to change. They have a formula and they stick to it. Meanwhile, Battlefield 2042 came out where they changed the player count and the map size, and it was worse because they didn't think about the 
the amount of people they're putting on a map versus the size. The map is four times the size with double the people. That's not enough space. Or that's uh, too much space, I mean. There's just... They, they couldn't... There was nothing they could have done there other than add more people or make the map smaller. Which I guess they're working on making the map smaller. That's good. Um, they wanted too much vehicle combat when vehicle combat isn't what people play Battlefield for. If you look at the Battlefield 4 custom servers, the ones that are infantry only are the ones that are still around, mostly. So, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, and then you roll over to, like, new other games that have come out recently that have completely changed their franchise, their series, by doing innovative things like Pokemon Legends of Arceus. Where everything feels different, and it's so good. You look at Halo Infinite, it's open world Halo. You know? Like, a little bit of change can go a long way. With uh, Halo Infinite, that is. The game feels a little more tactical as well. But if you take a look at, like, Pokemon Legends Arceus, all the primary systems are still there. Like, the catching, the battling, the leveling. The only things they changed were the evolution requirements and made it open world. Which is a huge step for Pokemon, because it was so linear before. But it still feels completely new. And I feel like that's what game devs are missing nowadays. Is that you're not looking for reinventing the wheel like I intend to. You are looking for innovations in a way that makes it feel as if you changed everything with without changing much like the weapons mods or modern warfare that was not like a an astoundingly new thing but it was original enough that it ended up making the game last longer than it would have it's just the little things you know you can't you can't release a new game as often as modern war as cod does without changing something in a interesting way in order to keep it around. Battlefield doesn't release games often at all. Battlefield one or 5 was what, four years ago? Three years ago? That game didn't do well because they changed too much from Battlefield 4. They went Battlefield 1 or 4 to Battlefield 1 and then to Battlefield 5. I don't know why, but they did. Uh, Battlefield 1 was set in World War 1, I, I believe. Uh, that game didn't go too well. It was incredibly poorly perceived on launch and then slowly gained popularity as it went on, but by that time the player base was already gone, so it didn't matter. Battlefield Five had something very similar, where the game was poorly perceived and then slowly gained popularity as it died, which is a problem for game lifespan. Because if you have popularity after you're a dead game, what are you gaining? You can't you can't make the climb back up to successful easily. And then Battlefield 2042, they were like, right, we're going to scrap everything we did with 1 and 5, and we're going to send it all back to what we wanted to, or what we were going to do with 4. Uh, other than increase the map size and increase the player size to a degree that just makes it not feel like Battlefield. There's more people, yet the games feel empty. Even more empty than they did. So, they uh, they fucked up, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> they did not do a good job there. And they also got rid of um the campaigns. And the campaigns in 4, at least, very solid. Hardline, very solid. Uh, I can't speak to the quality of 3's. I didn't play it. But I know that it features a Wrecker, I'm pretty sure, from 4. So, that's interesting if you want to go back and give it a shot. Um, I don't know, man. Even Borderlands 3, they were like, we gotta change everything. And they ended up screwing it up. Little, little innovation... A little, a little change can go a long way, you know? That's what I'm trying to say. It's just... You only need to do so much 
until everything is different. I don't, I, I can't, I, all I can say is a little innovation goes a long way. That being said, uh, I intend to do some, uh, some interesting stuff pretty soon for the channel. I intend to do a full episode of this dressed in full golf attire while at a uh, mini golf course, I believe. So we'll see how that goes. It's just going to be me playing mini golf while doing this with a lav mic. It's going to be real stupid. So it's going to be <laughs> me sitting there. You'll hear the wind every so often. And then you'll hear me go, fuck, because I miss my putt. Or I'll talk primarily about the golf course. Or I'll, you know what? I'll talk about the conditions of the golf course. You'll see. It'll be fun. Um, I might have a couple people on. We'll see. I might get a camera as well. Run a full run a full video on it. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. And it'll be really, really goofy. So, that being said, thank you all for stopping in and listening for, to another week of the Entropy Cast. The Patreon, still working on that. Still working on getting the other socials set up as well, because I want to. I want to be good, you know. But that being said, you can go follow my Twitch at Twitch.tv/kindofafugitive. That would be K-I-N-D-O-F-A-F-U-G-I-T-I-V-E. Or my um my primary channel by the same name. So that's where I'm. Um, I'm going to be uploading some of the new. The more interesting stuff that uh, I'm going to be doing soon, and we'll, uh, you'll see. It'll be fun. So, hope everybody has a fantastic day, a fantastic night, or a fantastic morning. And thank you for listening. Have a good one. <laughs>